sports editor Kevin Klum. <laughs> and I'm with sports editor Jared Bell. No Chris Yukis and no tablecloth this week, but uh, it should be still a good episode. There's a lot, a lot to talk about with postseason underway. Um, girls soccer is already actually over. Uh, Ottawa lost on Tuesday in the Morris Regional Semifinals. Princeton lost on Friday in the uh, Allman Regional Title Game. To so, Allman. To Allman, yep. So soccer's done with. But we have baseball softball in full swing now. Um, Putnam County and St. Pete softball teams are already in the regional championship. And there's a lot of other big games on the diamond this week. Yeah, the area of baseball softball scene is heating up. Uh, pun very much intended this week. Uh, like I said, the main regional for us for 2A baseball is in Ottawa, where Marquette is the 3 seed, Hall is the 2 seed, and St. B is the 1 seed. Um, it's rare that all three of those teams are together. They all had great seasons. Um, you'd hope that St. B, as the 1 seed, would be able to make it uh, to the championship and then face the winner of Hall and Marquette. Um, like I said, a lot of those teams are very familiar with each other, so it would be a good, good fun regardless of who plays. You also have Putnam County Baseball hosting their own regional, and I mean, no offense to other teams, but let's face it, they should win pretty easy. Um, you still have to do what you have to do, it's not a given, but you would expect them to advance um, out of their 1A regional to the 1A sectional next week. Yeah, that one's pretty easy compared to the Marquette uh, regional. The Marquette regional is stacked. I mean, that's, whoever wins that one's going to earn it. Um, and uh, we mentioned before, Putnam County softball, they'll be playing either Woodland or Marquette in the final at the Putnam County Regional. St. Bede also hosting their own regional in softball, and they'll be playing uh, either Princeton or, or Mendota, which that game's tonight in the semifinals, so we'll see they, they face on Saturday. Yeah, like I said, no matter where you want to go, there's a lot of teams that we could have in the regional title game, as well as winning regional title games, regardless of baseball or softball. So it should be a very, very good regional week for our team. We could have as many as seven uh, teams next week playing in a 1A or 2A sectional or a 3A, 4A regional. So there's a lot of really good teams that are hopefully bringing some postseason plaques back to the school. Um, you know, we also have the girls track this weekend. It's state, uh, you know, biggest weekend of the year for these athletes. And we have uh, 20 girls in the area as well as two re relays will be down in Charleston. Um, who do you think will be some of the uh, main medal contenders this year? Well, in 2A you have Princeton uh, Senior Phoenix Smallwood. I've joked before that in some of these smaller meets, they shouldn't even do the long jump or the triple jump. Just give her the medal. That's true. You, ex <laughs> you expect her to hopefully potentially place in both events. Um, you also have a lot of 1A medalists back from last year. I know you were down there. Um, distance is really strong in this area. So Maria Baldwin from Fieldcrest. Field you have Danny Art from uh, Marquette. You have Megan Krolak in uh, LP. So some of the the distance kids hopefully do well. Well, you can't forget Reagan Weiner. Yep. She has been hurt, but she did get second in uh, cross country and she medal last year in the in two miles. So she's a threat. Um, also in two A, Caitlin Horn has a shot in both the shot put and the uh, discus. Uh, discus. So and Zoe Mead from Princeton is seated fourth in both the 400 and the 800. And don't forget Lindsay Hoffer, who is the BV sophomore, who was our girls track athlete of the year last year. She also. Uh, she's had. She's also been hurt this year, so she's been plagued by injuries, just like Widener, just like you know, Fieldcrest, Tessa Holland. But she's been healthier as we got going along. I mean, you've really seen that in her distances. She had second right in the state last year in the long jump, so maybe she can win it this year. Yeah. So as you can see, there's going to be a <laughs> lot of possible medals from our area. Lots to choose from. Yeah. We also have boys track. Uh, the guys this week are trying to get to state. They have sectionals. Um, in 2A, we have LaSalle Peru. Princeton, Mendota, and Ottawa at the Plano sectional. Yep. Um, and then in 1A, we have a lot of the, the small school teams going to Bureau Valley. Uh, there, they like said, two ways might be kind of hard for some of our area schools. Um, you may have some individuals do well, but you don't expect it to be a lot. However, 1A is really where you expect to have a lot of individual state qualifiers and relays qualify for state. And I don't know if we'll have 20. Uh, individuals and then the two re relays like you have for girls, but you should have quite a bit. Yeah, I think in 2A you're looking at uh, Logan Zeman from LaSalle Peru in the high, high jump, jump and uh, Austin Stewart from Princeton in the high jump. And then, uh, the, you know, there's a few others here Damian and there. Damian Allen, who yeah. made the state last year in the 400. We also have Austin Brand from Ottawa, who's a pretty good jumper who has a shot. Um, and 1A, you know, some of the top names are, are Luke Hill from Marquette and, and distance events. Um, you have uh, Logan, uh, Wayne Logan Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> in, uh, in the triple well, jump. Keep in mind, Colin Imany is back in the long jumps, so he could he went to state last year, so he could do that as well. Um, you also have some of the same B kids, uh, like uh, Stephen Glandry in the, the jumps and in the hurdles. You also have some other kids, so it's, it's not just 
one or two schools like it may be in the two way. It's across the board. We might have a bunch of people. You must have Alex Pettis from Henry. He could do some stuff. So there's a lot of names to consider. Yeah, and the Bureau of Valley Relays, they've been strong all year. So I would expect what some hasn't the EV been strong in? That's true. Boy, they've 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 Logan Hoffer in the hurdles as well. I mean, you can keep going if you want. There's a lot of EV <laughs> kids. And uh, last but not least, uh, for the, the postseason, this week we have boys tennis going to the sectionals. LaSalle, Peru, um, Ottawa, and, and Mendota, and St. B are going to DeKalb this year. Usually it's at Ottawa, but it's been moved this year. And then Princeton uh, got sent to Moline. Uh, I would think uh, LP and Ottawa have a, a good chance for a few kids to go. Um, Trent, Trent and Jake Lipka from LP, number one doubles, have a good shot. Rio Hammers from LP, number one singles, has been there a few times. Probably Jackson Evenson from Ottawa singles. Uh, and then Mendota has a few strong kids who have a shot. Uh, Cody Phelan in singles. And then uh, James Carroll and Mark Prescott in doubles. So we'll see uh, how many kids get to state tennis. And now it's time for everybody's <laughs> favorite segment. And team prep preview, powerhouse players. Was that a uh, pretty good Chris impression right I there? I think so. All Can right. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yep. Touchdown. Roll that tape, please. <laughs> powerhouse Power players of the players week. Of the players week. of the week. Powerhouse Players of the Week. Powerhouse Players of the Week. How's that? Well, Kevin, our first powerhouse player is Princeton Traxer Zoe Mead. Uh, Zoe won three NCIC titles at Monday's conference meet. She won the 200, the 400, and the 800. Then she followed it up on Thursday at the Princeton 2A sectional by advancing to the 2A state meet in two events, uh, in the 400 and the 800. She's one of two Princeton kids to make it, so... Not a bad week for Zoe. Not at all. And uh, also not a bad week for Logan Bima from St. Bede Baseball. He went three for five with a single, a triple, a home run, and eight RBIs in the first game of a doubleheader Saturday. Then he tacked on two more, so that's a total of ten in just two games on Saturday for Logan. How about Logan Big Bat Bima? Oh, that's a pretty good nickname. There you go. See, Chris, 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 we're thinking about you. <laughs> well, Kevin, our final powerhouse player of the week is actually powerhouse players of the week. It is Trent and Jake Lipka, which is LP's number one doubles team. They won two matches during the week in duels and then rolled through the Northern Illinois Big 12 Conference uh, tournament on Saturday to win the doubles. Uh, they had a great week and a great season heading into the postseason, which starts on Friday. All right, well, that's it for this episode of <laughs> NT Prep Preview. Uh, join us again next week when we are talking about more postseason, so visit www.newstrib.com backslash sports. <laughs> <laughs>